Kyra and welcome to Parsing John. Today we are in the very last verse of chapter 1, verse 51, about to finish everything off. This is a rubric, everything that we're looking for is we can go through this verse and then what we look for in all the previous verses. Let's go ahead and get this last one started. Kai lege autai. Amen, amen, lego humim. Obseste ton uranon an oigota gota, sorry, kai tus angelus tu theu. Ana bainon tos kai kata bainon tos epi ton huyon tu anthropu. And there we go. That's the end of the chapter there. Our very first word is our pleasant word kai, just meaning and. Lege comes after that. That's our verb epsilon yoda. We've seen this form many times before, so we know that this end of the quote that we had right there is in fact correct. And that reminds me I didn't end the his own quote there. So that's it. Sorry. There we go. Lege, third person, singular, present tense, active and indicative in form, says, don't have a noun, so I'm going to insert he, this should be Jesus still speaking, autoi, sub yoda there is going to give us the exact same form as we saw here, so I'm not going to decline that again, it's just going to be to him, direct quote, Amen, amen. This is not a native Greek word, so we can't really decline it, but it's it just translates to truly, truly. Lego, this omega here, tells us that this is the first person form of this exact same thing. So first person singular, don't need declining more. Truly, truly, I say... Who mean, who mean with this Yoda here is going to be a dative plural. And it doesn't have a gender because both masculine and feminine use the same forms. That's as far as that goes. This is, of course, the plural form of su. Who may should be its nominative. To you all, comma. And then we have obsessed there. Epsilon, sigma, theta, epsilon here is going to be second person plural to match that. Horao opsomai, so ops is our stem, so that's going to make it future and deponent. Indicative. You will see. And then one would see a direct object, which we find here with ton uranon. So omicron nu here is accusative, singular. Ton tells us that it's masculine. If it were neuter, then it would just be to, just like the nominative form, which is not inside the screen. There we go. Back to this. The heaven, or sky if you prefer. Not closing off that bracket yet because we're not sure that we're done with this direct object. So we move ahead and we find an e oigota. This alpha here tells us that this is actually a nominative or accusative singular off of um, the verb anoigo, and it is a participle. Since this is accusative and this matches the gender of uranon, then it should be accusative as well. But I'm going to put nominative in there, just cross it out. And it is anoigo, anoixo, ane oixa, ane oiga. So this is off of the perfect stem. We've got the omega iota there. I could be wrong. But I think perfect, active, participle in it. Sorry, this is singular, meaning having opened kai, and so this could be connecting another participle to ton or onon, or it could be introducing a new direct object, or technically it could be introducing a completely new clause, but as we take a look ahead, there's no obvious verb, so it looks like it's connecting a new direct object. Verb, 
obtus angulus. Omicron upsilon sigma, there is our accusative plural masculine. And that means that this bracket should end there. The angels or messengers to theu. Omicron upsilon there is, of course, genitive singular masculine of the god. Ana by non tas. Alpha sigma here tells us that this is accusative plural masculine, so that matches tus angulus. And this is anabino, because I believe this is the present stem right there. Active, and of course another participle. And this means going up, or if you prefer the word, ascending. Chi just means answer. The same situation as we had here it could be connecting another participle, it could be connecting another direct object, or it could be connecting another clause. Already looked through, didn't see any obvious verbs, so clause is unlikely. And instead, we have kata by non tos, kata by non tas, sorry, which is the exact same form as this, except it's got kata rather than ana, and ana means up, and kata normally means down. So I'm not going to bother declining this again. This just is another part of the participles modifying that. And this means going down. Or descending. And that looks like this ends our direct object. Close that off. Epi is a preposition. And in this case, it looks like it's taking ton hoyon either accusative or technically genitive, but we wouldn't have an accusative separating the preposition from its object, so that's not probable. Accusative has to be the option. Ton huion is going to be singular and masculine, and then it ends right here. And then we have a couple of different options for translating epi. Could be across. Could be over be on, or it could be upon. So we want to try each of these and see which one makes sounds the best, makes the most sense in context. But let's go ahead and translate to anthropu first. We've got omicron upsilon here, so genitive, singular, masculine of the and this means of course man period. Now to figure out which one of these four makes the most sense. You will see the sky having opened and the messengers or angels of the god ascending and descending across the son of the man, or ascending and descending over the son of the man, or ascending and descending on the son of the man, or ascending and descending upon the son of the man. Any of them could work. Um, not sure that there's a major change in the actual meaning of it. Since the sky is up, across probably doesn't fit. Over, eh, not so much. On or upon are probably our two best options. So this one or this one, I think, makes the most sense. But I, I don't see too much of an issue using either of these. Not yet. There we go. That is all verse 51. Go ahead and take a look at it in its own context. And he says to him, Truly, truly, I say to you all, you all will see the heaven or sky having opened and the angels or messengers of the God going up, ascending, and descending on the son of the man. And there we go. Now let's take a look at it in the greater context from verse 43. Tying off this chapter. On the next day, he wished to have gone into the Galilee. And he finds Philip, and the Jesus says to him, Follow me.
But the Philip was from Bethsaida, from the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip finds the Nathanael, and he says to him, What Moses wrote in the law and what the prophets wrote, we have found Jesus, son of the Joseph, the one from Nazareth. And Nathanael said to him, Is it possible for anything from Nazareth to be good? Philip says to him, Come and see. The Jesus saw the Nathanael coming toward him, and says concerning him, See, truly, Israelite, in whom is not deceit. Nathanael says to him, Whence do you know me? Jesus answered and said to him, Before Philip called you, being under the fig tree, or while you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Nathanael answered him, Rabbi, you are the son of the God. You are king of the Israel. Jesus answered and said to him, Because I said to you, because or that I saw you under the fig tree, do you believe? Greater than these you will see. And he says to him, Truly, truly, I say to you all, you all will see the sky, or heaven, having open, and the angels of the God going up and going down on the Son of the Man. And there we go. Now there's one final thing to do, and then we're fully done with this chapter, and you may be free to live life normal again. And that's to check for any proper nouns without our articles, as we've done before. I'm looking over here. Heaven has an article, not really a proper noun, whatever. Angels has an article. God has an article. Man has an article. Sun has an article. There is nothing further to check. We are officially done with chapter one. Thank you very much for joining me through all of this. If you care to continue on, the next video will be finishing off the Latin version of this chap uh, chapter with verse 51. I think I just repeated 51 several times. Anyway, fin next video will finish off all of that. And then I'm going to be comparing the Latin text and the Greek text to each other to see how well the Latin text matches up to the Greek text. And then I'll finally be done. So, two weeks. If you include this one. Again, thank you very much for joining me. Um, I hope that you continue with me as I move on to something else, probably chapter two. <laughs> I've changed format a little bit. Though, if, if anybody has suggestions, let me know, and I might um, add that on or change to that entirely. I hope you have a good day.